Uh, welcome back once more to uh, Literary as Feck. Uh, hello, Nick. How are you? Not too bad. Uh, yourself? Uh, also not bad. Good, good. Right. A blistering our, start. A rip-roaring uh, start here. So we decided um, to keep it light this week. Yes. Yeah, yeah. How did you... So I'm actually, as I always am, I'm kind of interested to know where you where you found this or where you came across this, where where did this get onto your radar, that there was this fairly massive tome, um, although it, a lot of it is end notes, which, did you read the end notes, Clive? I did not. I, I, I did, I did, and I found oh. some interesting things in there as well. Um, okay, good. Not necessarily things I'm going to chat about here, but just... Um, okay. The so things to chase. Worth them. going back to at, at some point. But, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But this is my digital copy, and there's Clive's um, paper copy. No, no, this is actually an extremely sophisticated uh, digital copy. Oh, all right. Yeah, it's future technology I'm using. Okay. Um, War Without Mercy. Yeah. Race and Power in the Pacific War by John W. Dower. Mm -hmm. So I came to this through um, another John Dower book. So so this, hey. this book we're discussing... I should have looked this up. I think it dates from like the mid 80s, doesn't it? Um, yeah, 86, yeah, I think. 86, yeah. So much later, uh, John Dower uh, wrote a kind of sequel to this okay. book called Embracing Defeat, which is about um, the American occupation in Japan okay. after the war, right. GHQ, and the Tokyo trials. Okay. Uh, it's a book actually both me and my wife have read, and that is a tremendous book. Like, okay, I would highly recommend if you found anything of interest here. Mm -hmm. uh, embracing defeat is, I mean, I, I, I found this an extremely worthwhile, mm -hmm. read, but embracing defeat is, is another okay. a few levels up. Like, he obviously, um, I think it might even have won something or was a. Or nominated for a Pulitzer or something okay. like that, you know, which okay, doesn't wow. necessarily mean you know that it's going to be great, but um, it's a fairly you know fairly good hit rate with the Pulitzer stuff, mm -hmm. right? Um, yes, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and so he's a professor at um, MIT or professor emeritus or however you say that. Um, apparently, according right. to his um, his Wikipedia page, anyway. Mm. Um, well, I yeah, it's about uh, yeah, yeah. I I I will I will believe you. I I see no reason okay. to make this stuff up. Um, okay. But I only know him from Embracing Defeat, and it was such a good book that when I discovered that he had this kind of earlier, almost prequel about the Pacific mm -hmm. War, I thought, oh yeah, that's um gonna be a a fantastic read. And uh, whereas it's not quite up there with Embracing Defeat, he'd obviously uh, yeah become just a better writer and researcher mm -hmm. in the interim. It still is. A very worthwhile read, I think. What did you what What did you uh, just just off the top of your head? Did, I mean, did you find this um, a worthwhile read? Not hard going, easy going. No, I did. I did not find it hard going. I, I would say, I mean, if I was gonna, I might as well get the the bad out of the way with right away, actually, because most yeah. of it is most of it is really good. I would say the only thing that struck me is that there was a several points in the book where I thought this would have benefited from an editor with a keener eye to not having repetitious stuff there were yes. there were several moments where i was like we have already know this you've told us this already and, and whether it was yes. for effect or whatever it still wasn't a great choice i think uh, uh it would almost felt like maybe a 1986 reader mm. maybe he felt like i have to lay this on really thick because they're just not going to believe me they're just going to be in that headspace right. of like no america can do or no wrong you know because like, i and it, it tends to be more in those sections where he's trying to kind of let you know that that the war is not as one-sided as as maybe it was right. painted and also you know nearing the end of the book we do get into this this um acknowledgement that the 80s was a time of increased tensions again between japan and the states but for but for economic reasons right right and so a lot of these old kind of uh tropes were being pulled out and, and repurposed um yes. you know, during that time so maybe he just felt like my but yeah, that would be the one thing so there, there was there were several moments in the book where i was like yes i know you, you told know, me I, 
I agree um, with you, and it's actually quite interesting. I suppose this is this is in the realm of historiography, right? It is kind of interesting to think of this book as a a book that came out in the mid eighties as well. Because yes, I, to your point, I think it is slight, like for instance. I think if he wrote this book now, I think he would be slightly more well balanced because it's it seems like one of the theses of the book in a way is to yeah to go out of its way to because at that time I think you you would have it soft it soft pedals um what the Japanese did to a certain extent I think because. I, I think it probably in 1986, it felt it wasn't necessarily necessary to push that front, that stuff forward. Right, because that, that, that was felt already, as, as common knowledge or... or that yeah, exactly, the or would have been the perceived wisdom. And it was more yeah. important to kind of, um, to, 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 to show what the Allies were up to with their kind of horrendously racist propaganda. <laughs> Scientific racism, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it, yeah. it feels a little bit lopsided in that way whereas I think if he wrote it now I think they would because also I think it would probably be I I felt I felt as if some of the it's not not that, not that it wasn't well researched it's an extremely well researched book but I still ironically in a way the the whole kind of thing about um because one one of the stereotypes that he tries to 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 kind of bust in a way is the whole inscrutable, yes. inscrutable Japanese thing. But in a way, it does suffer a little bit from, like, the 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 chapters on the American propaganda seems like it comes from a place very much of understanding, like, there's a background there where yeah, where it 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 doesn't necessarily it has no problem kind of explaining exactly where this stuff comes from where yes. it yeah. comes from and placing it placing blame for it or placing reasons for it and then when it comes to the japanese propaganda it gives examples but it doesn't feel necessarily like he totally understand he, he shows it rather than kind of yes yes you know satisfyingly larger context like a lot of that stuff i still like I, yes i understand the whole thing about the yama tourists and 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 you know mm -hmm. kind of purifying the world through spilling the blood of you know the non yama tourists and all this and stuff but i still feel as if a wider context was needed for me to really understand i still don't really know from this book alone at least yeah where the roots of that are really do, do, does that make sense to you do, do we yes do that? yes yeah i think so and you know i mean that may be in part because um you know america is a younger country and there's less i mean so in a way the, 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 it's easier to kind of say well america is this um you know it was founded on on this act of transgressive violence against the indigenous people of of you know north america and then you got slavery and then so it's and it's kind of compacted like there's a lot of racism happening in a very kind of short space of time, whereas it feels like Japan, there's a, yeah, there's a lot more to unpack because it's, it's, it's been around a lot longer. Um, and I don't think he, he's, a, he, I don't think he has the space or, or maybe you're right, the understanding uh, to kind of really. Well, it's funny as well. Makes That's sense. kind of I, ironic as well, right? Because the one thing, I mean, we'll, I, I, I was going to try and do this, um, Systematically, but I think we'll probably just end up jumping around. Uh, yeah, maybe the I'm uh, unless you disagree with it, but yeah. So so I, that's ironic in a way because one of the things, one of the more um, condescending elements of of the ally, uh, not just the not just the anti-Japanese rhetoric when it was full out like full out total war, but just yes. in general, you know, when trying to understand the inscrutable. Asia thing. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of there's a lot of this talk, isn't there? But are there they're a childish race and yes. they're at this yeah. different level of de development and stuff. And then you realize, well, no, that's probably more of a mirror up to your own. Yep. Um, kind of you've you've reached. It's like the whole little knowledge is a is a dangerous thing. Like you've reached this point. Yes. You've, you've made a few. You've made a few. Uh, um, you've joined a few dots. Yeah. And then that's it. 
And it's like, yes, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's probably a lot more sophisticated and deeper than that, right? Mm -hmm. But but the, yeah, this whole nonsense about yes, um, the the you know the young Japanese man has poor balance because he's been carried on his back by his mother. And yes, my yeah. toilet tray the blaming, yeah, the, blaming the, like... the blaming the mum's part is just classic. It's just classic, <laughs> uh, white people like white, like like that's you know my wife has often talked about that like the way that her her grandmother was blamed for you know one of her uncles who who you know has schizophrenia. So, hmm. but it was you know that that was an era even in the fifties and sixties where it was like nope. If you're if if your child has a diagnosable mental illness, it's your fault. You you did something wrong as the mum. But in this right. case, yeah, an entire nation that's overmothered, that had too strict toilet training, um, and has somehow yeah mm. created this. Yeah, I mean it's just. And but and, but also then there then there's there's other people who are like no 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 you'll find if you cut open the brain you will find that the um the Japanese brain lacks the gray matter. Um, <laughs> right. So, right. It's just, it's like, who are these? Yeah, it's eugenics, isn't it? Basically, I, 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 you even get it up until you know stuff like in the pop psychology, you get that whole stuff in a uh, Fight Club, for example. We were a whole generation raised by mothers, and, and yeah, actually, oh yeah, 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 yeah. It sounds clever for about five minutes, and and then and then you kind of move on. Apart from you know the proud boys who like oh, yeah. make an entire yeah. culture based on basically wanting to be Tyler Durden, right? mm -hmm. um. Again, not necessarily blaming the film for that. Yes, uh, yes. Anyway, we um, enough tangent. But, but here's so I mean, maybe we'll just jump back, you know, to yeah, yeah, to just some, jump around. Let's some jump of around. the big, some of the big things that, in a way, for me, were were really interesting about the book were things that, like, you know, having read over the years, read about World War Two, read about the you know the run up to World War Two, read about Japan, um, you know. This kind of put this put a new context or new frame onto so, some of these things, and I had never really thought about them in this specific way. But from a Japanese perspective, I think it did a good job of setting out. Look, so what you've got here is you've got a, a country that was for you know uh, however many hundred years deliberately kind of sealed off, right? Made the choice we don't want uh, much in the way of of um, contact or or you know. Um, kind of looking around and and then you know sort of contact is forced on them right with uh perry comes along matthew perry right great name yeah. uh isn't he in um he was in friends and, yeah yeah um I love a career. long long <laughs> yeah yeah uh from gunships to uh to sitcoms but yeah so he um you know he, japan is forcibly opened up to the west um which even that like always sounds like some sort of meta like sexual metaphor that places japan in this passive you know anyway um this happens, Japan suddenly becomes aware that like of, you know, uh, the West and all of this, this body of writing about how the West views, because, you know, it's, it's right there, right from the beginning, like, like the, the racism is just so obvious in the way that, that, you know, um, well, how, your, like you said, this is being... near this scientific racism, right? Where it's like, no, 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 we're not racist. We're just dealing with the data that Back. we've got. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, so you've got that, and then they're also looking around and going, "Well, hang on." So um, all of the countries around us have Europeans in them, yeah, yeah. colonizing them. How right? You've got until... Malaysia, Singapore, you know, Indonesia, Vietnam, you know, uh, China, uh, the English and the Dutch and the French and the rest of them, are there, and the Americans, right, are in the Philippines. They're everywhere, and and yeah, so it would be a kind of like a holy crap if we do want to keep our our freedoms and if we do want to keep our culture then we need to figure out some way of existing you know and potentially competing with uh you know and then there's the war right the war between which i think i tend to forget about the war between russia and japan yes which is yeah. japan's first moment of like oh hang huge, on a huge deal in its day like that yeah, you know, we, uh, the other thing a lot not... of people forget about that war is that's also the pre first world war that's that's where trench warfare was kind of born, right? That, right. That's the first time that became... Um... Yeah, yeah. I mean, it really was the beginning of modern war, right? Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the, what is it? The Sino-Japanese War, right? Um, no, Russo-Japanese. Russo-Japanese War, yeah. Sorry, Sino-China. Yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah, you've got, you've got this happens, and then Japan is emboldened, and it's like, hang on. Uh, 
yeah, we're not we're not a second we don't have to be second class uh you know a nation in our own um continent um and then some decisions are made about you know like maybe we should just maybe we should have our own empire right and this is where we get well, into trouble yeah well this is this is one of the big traps right i think this is one of the historical traps um and this will lead to another one as well that i really want to talk about and one of my big takeaways of the book but yes there is and and, and this is why you want to be careful right because the you know the people who are still around now the the the, the apologists for because uh, yeah because that's the other thing i mean number one this is something i was just uh, I'm sorry my mind's going a million different ways and yeah. I, I just i wanted to mention this actually um in the in in the acknowledgements at the beginning of the book you know the thank yous or whatever there was one that really hit home to me because being married to a japanese woman and um <laughs> speaking of you know earlier 20th early 20th century japanese history mm-hmm. can sometimes be a contentious um yes there's some things mm-hmm. we just don't talk about anymore yeah because mm-hmm. it's just yeah it into, and it was funny i and um the last thanks that uh, John Dower gives is, uh, finally, as always, I thank my wife, Yasko. This one, by its nature, was harder than usual. And I can kind of imagine the Dower household um, <laughs> maybe uh-huh. n- being a bit of a chilly atmosphere mm-hmm. sometimes uh, doing research for this book. And yeah, so so th- the thing, yeah, apologists, it, so obviously, um the Japanese got up to some incredibly heinous shit during yes the yeah, yeah. And, and the book, and no, the book doesn't, the book there's doesn't no gloss way over around that. no no it doesn't gloss over it as well but it, like I said I don't think it necessarily gives so much time to it just because I think he would have felt that his his readership would have kind of taken that for granted and he is yeah. he is trying to reestablish a balance a little bit whereas like I said if he, I think if he wrote the book now it it would be weighted slightly differently, right? Because mm-hmm. now we've almost gone into another phase, I think, where where yeah, the apologists and 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 the the more kind of um um you know trying to be overly fair and balanced kind of white liberal guilt thing is trying to give too much, you know. Like like you were saying that the, yeah the the whole thing about well you know Japan were in a position and and you know all around them and all that so yeah why not the greater Asian core prosperity sphere where right. friendship with their with fellow Asians and 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 stuff like that right which yes 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 it's, it's you have a hard time selling anybody in China or Korea well, that's, that's my point yeah exactly or, yeah, yeah. Manila, how that all worked out yeah yeah exactly yeah. so obviously it didn't um and 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 it's very difficult to pinpoint if if even if there was a but let's just give the benefit of the doubt let's say there was a certain amount of benevolence uh planned out and then at a certain point it crossed over into um yeah nationalism and mm-hmm. exceptionalism and flat out racism racism right yeah. it's very difficult but the other thing I've always uh, this is uh, the reason I mentioned my conversation with my wife. This is, comes up quite often. Is I think people maybe don't take into account, and it's it's difficult to take into account because it's really difficult to it's really difficult to pinpoint where these things change or if they change or how they change. Or but um, the Japanese of today, let's say, yep. are not necessarily the same as the Japanese of a hundred years ago, right? Like mm-hmm. nations do change, right? On yeah. mass. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, even think about like, I mean, like the, the you know, the, um, it's a slightly wide, a bigger time frame, but still, you know, the, 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 um, well, you don't even have to go, the, the, the Norwegian of, let's say the 15th century is not, you know, yes. nowhere near as brutal, as yeah. ancestors would have been or you know mm-hmm. things change times change people change so i think mm-hmm. one of the reasons it might be difficult for uh, uh people to come to terms with their history I- i'm wondering if you know the japanese of the 1930s is 
so different from the Japanese of today. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's one extra layer to kind of bring in, I think, because you're 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 trying to think, you're trying to relate to. Well, I wouldn't do that, or my neighbors wouldn't do that, or my mm-hmm. friends wouldn't do that. But then again, but you know, there there are epochs, right? And even if they're very close in time, there are mm-hmm. you know, rubicons that you cross, right? And in general, then I I would say the national the national mood of 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 Japan today of Japan in the last thirty years is so different that it you know even as a Japanese person doesn't necessarily mean you can relate to a Japanese person or yeah yeah decades earlier um and I'd imagine Germany is very much the same um, well any, anyone anyone but I you know, I'm just specific because we're talking about this book I mean yeah. Japanese well, I I do um it, you know it's interesting because you you brought up the whole kind of proud boys and that and kind of thing I found it very strange that recently the people who would have been kind of, you know, maybe 40, 50 years ago, um, the most vocal kind of like anti-Asian, anti-Japanese kind of, you know, there's a lot of those I mean, white supremacists now who speak fondly of Japan, particularly of the ultra right, the kind of like the hard line, the present day hard right in Japan and see them as being a model and and kind of like I see websites and stuff I've seen, you know, like comments and stuff. And I'm like, wow, that's right. interesting that they're saying, like, look what a great job Japan right. has done keeping undesirables out and of keeping Lots their race diversity. clean and right, right, stopping right. miscegenation and so on. And and you're like, OK, wow. Uh, um, just because, you know, it, it, it feels like to a certain degree supremacism or whatever has become less about absolutely race in some ways and more about something else like something about almost more esoteric in some weird way about it being this more hard right exclusionary control your borders keep others out but not necessarily it's become a very weirdly sophisticated ideological form of racism isn't it yeah Um, um but anyway i you know so i think um Getting back to, to, to so you know, I, I think one of the things that was really interesting to me was this idea that that the Japan running up to the war and, and having kind of established these colonies around Asia and you know seeing that you know the war breaking out in in um, in Europe, you know uh, that there was this idea that um, well if we attack if we attack America first, they're going to be so freaked out that they're right. just going to. And, you know, yeah. this, I guess it does come after they have these, because that fascinated me too, this idea that like the Europeans, particularly the British, went from so quickly from being, uh, these, we have nothing to fear from these uh, lesser peoples, you know, mm. uh, the Japanese, uh, yeah, they're a child race, they're, you know, whatever else, to suddenly being, no, no, they're all supermen, they're all terrifying, uh, you know, uh, right. experts right. In, in land, sea, and air, uh, you know, combat. Yeah. Uh, we, we, you know, it's only a matter of time before we're all praising the emperor. Um, that kind of like sudden shift, but it is because there is this period at the beginning of the war where they do chase much larger armies of, of you know, um, British out of, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, out of Singapore, out of these places. But then this idea that like that the Americans would just be like, ah, uh, whatever, like let them have Hawaii, like the lack of. Oh, yeah, that classic. is going to create this I mean, massive. Pearl Harbor yeah. is the classic kind of misstep, right? Like, yeah, there was the. It's actually amazing now in retrospect. Did they watch no cowboy movies? <laughs> like, it was really like it's it's all there, right? Um, right. Yes. I mean, still now. I mean, the, the whole notion of the stand your ground laws, and you know that. Yeah, just the idea of and that biblical eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Someone else is preferable to allowing someone to trespass on your property. Yeah, or or even like yeah, shooting someone and killing them is preferable to letting them potentially get away for a while and then catch them. I I mean, I know there's new ones. Yeah, there are di- but still, just it, it it's just it's it's a slightly it's tipped slightly further one way than than the more typical European mindset, where you know, um, 
yeah, yeah. It's not. There were. It's not. It was never going to be a thing where, where yeah. Uh, and this idea that like, they're they're not going to want to fight this war on the other side of the world. It's just going to be tiring for them, and they're all just going to be like, nah, you know, just go ahead. Have right. you know, have have Asia. We're, we're not going to worry about it. Um, and then. I think the other thing that was really interesting to me is then, the, the, so this constructed other, right, which is really what the book is all about. How does yes. how does the Japanese mind at this point construct the Westerner, to construct the Allied powers, and then how do the Allied powers yeah, as the ring of, of yeah the Japanese? And uh, you know, for me, the biggest takeaway, the biggest difference, obviously, uh, is this idea of the American propaganda focusing on. Japanese people like as a monolithic like it's not right, right. it's not Tojo it's not the emperor it's like no all yeah, Japanese yeah, people yeah, are yeah. not just even soldiers everyone is a problem yeah. and maybe we need to exterminate everyone that was well, know, the amazing. exterminationist it's rhetoric the coming from the beginning of the war right to the very end like the interesting that, point with, that John Dower makes is the fact that there was no equivalent and, and, and this his thesis that it was you know a, 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 a racist, racist war yeah uh, is the fact that yeah there was no distinction for instance there was no such thing as the good German right for like, Japanese yeah 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 right. like um, yeah Italian you, they, Italians they, they, were allowed to be yeah they made know, the distinction between a Nazi and a German whereas in the Japanese they didn't and also the other one as well the other uh, thing that he brings up which is maybe not entirely Andrew but it's an interesting notion to think about as well is um you know the what happened with the Holocaust, for example, um, I think is is kind of a little easy to forget now that that wasn't necessarily as totally well known and as widespread immediately, right? No, it's no, quite it took, it took a little took while. Quite a while now. Now, in retrospect, it's actually quite amazing because you as you assume because we tend to think of you know the World War Two being the good fight and and standing up to to you know uh, an oppressive regime you know which it is to a certain extent but also mm -hmm. you know we we've we've made the mistake in retrospect of thinking that all those you know all those people out there fighting had this in mind right like, oh we're fighting for the six million jews no 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 no, no. you know soldiers probably and certainly would have found out about it pretty quickly but but it, at large that stuff leaked it and and also compound that with the fact that it's not as if germany was the only anti-semitic uh, oh, yeah, yeah. america was massively anti-semitic yeah well i mean parts it's, of europe it's, were anti-semitic it's and very well i mean this, this are, it's, right it's, I mean, yeah yeah it's, and it's not the purview of this book to deal with it but i mean no 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 uh, but it's interesting it's, that it's, they, it's well known that boatloads shiploads of, of jewish refugees were turned uh, away yeah, from yeah. canada the u.s england and sent right back yeah. to face the holocaust right so yeah there's, so there's no question so it's interesting just to factor that in that the you know the that that you know I mean if you were to make comparisons then there's a shorter distance between the Gentile and Jew right so so then obviously the Asian is going to be even more different yeah, yeah, yeah. Easier, othering other. othering is much is much easier when yes that but as I mean I I think Noam Chomsky said like for him one of the most fascinating cases of this is where to an out like so you know you take an Englishman and an Irishman and put them next to each other. And um, to and then ask ask you know uh, somebody from China or or you know Malaysia to be like well which one's the Englishman which one's the Irishman um, and yet there was an entirely constructed othering there that he said it was so sophisticated and so strange because really you know um, like all of those you know ape people cartoons and stuff and you know drunken yeah. throwing bombs. Um, well, that was but, the other thing. That was the other. That was the major takeaway, I think, for this book. Because obviously, I was somewhat aware by by a lot of this stuff. Um, but um, yeah, just it really, it really made a, a, a really brought it into clear focus. Um, by the time we got to the war in the Pacific, like just the kind of amazing really to think about just the fucking kill crazy bloodlust i mean yes. it's yeah. really quite astonishing to think about yes the levels of just totally yeah. 
misanthropic. Yeah. That it was an extreme, yeah. That it was a really an extreme, like like that. That basically, uh, soldiers were told don't take prisoners. Ideally, uh, on on both sides, you know, uh, right. just just kill kill as many of them as you can. Kill, um, kill, kill. Yeah. Well, it's, it's funny as well. It also made, in retrospect, it made me appreciate a little bit more. If you remember a very different book we did, uh, the Rat Bastards. Yes. Remember yes. That? Actually, thinking about it, I mean, if you were if you were just to take that book as a just a kind of straight up like. We're not making any, um, we're not making any moral claims here. We're just mm -hmm. mirroring what the experience might have been like. That book might be, yeah, closer to yeah, reality than uh, yeah. unfortunately, um, mm -hmm. the, so those, those thing... marines or whatever probably behaved in a way, you know that. I mean, I mean, just the fact that I mean, just the fact that just to put it into a kind of context, just the fact that. And this is, you know, this wouldn't have, this was, would have been in a like a a, a major um, a, a, a newsstand periodical life. Mm -hmm. a, a, a woman, a, a girlfriend yeah. of an enlisted man, could pose with the skull of a Japanese soldier on the cover. Yeah, that was like, mailed to her. Wow, just yes. just um, incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, no, it's it's medieval, right? Like it really, it truly was. It was like that war brought people back to, back to the Crusades or something in some in some kind of way. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, so one thing, one thing that was interesting to me was was just realizing that kind of the sophisticated understanding of of American racism from the perspective of of like the Japanese and the way in which they were able to propagandize to a certain degree, or use that as propaganda, right? But the fact that, like, because you know, it was no secret that in in you know in the states uh, that you know a number of African American soldiers were like, so we're going off to fight against white supremacism, yes, right. But we can't share barracks with the white soldiers, and you know, like, um, basically, yeah, that like there was a real cognitive dissonance there in the states about using this rhetoric of we're going to fight racism. And we're still enacting all of this right. Jim Crow racist stuff, you know. And then the the Japanese were seeing this and were kind of pointing out, like, well, isn't this incredibly mm. uh, hypocritical? And also, look what they did to their indigenous people. Uh, you know, look what, like, the, America is a country founded on, you know, some fairly, you know, nasty things. And uh, And so they were able to propagandize and almost see the seams and start to leverage them in the same way that, like, let's face it, Russian propagandists have been very good at doing now. Right. About looking at other right. countries and finding those fault oh, absolutely. lines. Absolutely. And then leveraging them, you know, now with yeah. Fox and, you know, Facebook posts. Um, but well, uh, A good example of that is, which is quite interesting, uh, one thing that I wasn't familiar with, I have to admit that this uh, book uh, uh, taught me about, was I'd never heard of the Tanaka Memorial before um which is this kind of interesting it's kind of uh, something akin i suppose to the protocols of the elders of zion right this was yeah. currently something that in 1927 the the uh, uh japanese pm uh the baron uh, gichi tanaka had yeah put out this proposal for basic uh world domination by japan right uh and uh, it has been entirely discredited uh, as far as i can tell apparently initially leaked in China in 1929, and st still unsure exactly who concocted this, whether it was the Soviet, right. the Chinese, or, or some combination of both. But it's fascinating. I'd never heard of the Tanaka Memorial before, but it, it seems like mm -hmm. I, 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 I would read an entire book about how that was disseminated. I'm sure that would be right. fascinating. Um, but yes, but again, the, I mean, I suppose the way we're talking about it as well is 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 kind of indicative of like what i said it is slightly weighted like it really gets into the weeds and this on in this stuff on 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 the allied side i would have liked mm -hmm. an yes. equal amount yes yes and i i don't feel it's as necessarily as 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 well and i think it might be just a matter of maybe not necessarily understanding it well enough like acknowledging it and yeah i'm not saying it doesn't say that it's not one sided in the way that it's that it's you know the that this side did that and that side didn't do it as much or whatever it's not that it's just mm. the detail isn't there and i would yes, really yes, yeah. like 
to I, well actually i suppose what i would like would be a would be a companion piece to this book written by a japanese scholar i think yeah yeah yeah, yeah. be more um mm -hmm. who would be more qualified maybe to to kind of really dig out the roots and and kind of relate to it and understand it in the way that Dawa can clearly do with with the allied side um one thing that really struck me that you know it i it did definitely enjoyed the kind of the, the digging into how the propaganda was kind of created like you know i mean the images are always they're always like wow right uh propaganda posters from that era or they're not they <laughs> they laid things on pretty thick um but it was I'm interesting to me for I'm example, not showing any of them just yes. in case yes our I think that's video why. gets taken down yes um but i i did you know it's funny years ago when i was a kid i think i saw one of the you know a fairly egregiously racist um popeye cartoons that mm. was made at this point right um and uh and then you know reading this made me aware that there was like uh well I, you know there's also who was it um frank was it frank capra that does the whole series yes. of uh, well, yeah know your enemy kind of films yeah actually this is an interesting one uh, i would recommend if you want i mean not necessarily from the from the race angle but it's just a fascinating piece of history of of, of yeah world uh, uh, wartime propaganda filmmaking there's actually a very good uh, netflix miniseries uh, three okay. series documentary called five came back and it's about five hollywood filmmakers who are enlisted to make propaganda films uh, i think it's okay. ian weiler george stevens Frank Capra, John Ford, and another one whose name is okay. me. But it's it's fascinating. I mean, there's a lot of stuff, a bit of a tangent. There's a lot of stuff in that I did not find. If I'm remembering this correctly, um, John Ford was at the D-Day landings and okay. suffered incredible PTSD. Wow, from the DA on this, like, like, right, yeah, of course, like yeah. they couldn't find. Apparently, they couldn't find him. Like he just lost his mind and went on some kind of bender for a week or something before wow. they found him, and he was just a totally ruined man, you know. Um. So no, no, I would recommend Five Came Back. It's okay. very, very good, um, and and also because of that, what Netflix also did in conjunction with it was they restored some of those propaganda films, and you could see some of them. And I think one of them was yeah the. The one you were mentioning, the Capra man, which is uh, um, the Capra one, which is, uh, um, yeah, know your enemy, Japan, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, which I think uh, actually that's uh, that's where the Tanaka Memorial thing comes up. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, but like the idea that um, I also was fascinated to think that like <laughs> when they were originally, because it was quite a process apparently. Like like what's so strange about that one? It's the last one released, and it's released like literally weeks before Japan surrenders, right? Right. Uh, it's quickly. So, uh, you know, uh, well, it's, it's, I, I think they said it is quickly taken out of circulation, right? Um, yeah. After after Hiroshima, um, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, it was just mm -hmm. oh, okay. It's probably best if I were take that out of cinemas. Yeah, people, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know but, that that the, an early drafts of a lot of those things were were like basically seen as too well because they they kind of drafted in academics and 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 a lot of these people tended to be kind of lefties. You know, so that the early drafts of these things were like, "Oh, these are these are far too communist. We need to like get that stuff out, or, <laughs> right, or far too right. sympathetic." Like, like this idea of like of they were attempting in some ways to distinguish between right. the common Japanese, the farming, the farming yeah, people, they, women in yeah. Japan, and the powers that be were like, "No, no, we want this oh, no. very blanket." But what what's, so what's interesting about that is this idea that like on the one hand, the American propaganda is constructing the Japanese as this homogenous, you know mass uh undifferentiated everyone's committed to the fight to the very bitter end and this is why we have to but at the same time japan is also constructing japanese in the same way there's just all of this 100 million hearts beat as one 100 million yeah well that's the thing that's why in the fire like that's why the nuance i think this is why it's so difficult to discuss in a certain way so, like i said that thing about some things are off limits to talk about at home and stuff it is because like more stereotypes there's 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 a reason they exist, right? Because there's a kernel of truth, misunderstood truth, but still there's a, there's something. So yeah, the whole inscrutable thing, for example. I mean, 
there, there's a reason that exists. I, I mean, in your own experience, I mean, when you were living here, I mean, we would have discussed this where, you know, sometimes things happen, Japanese do do things which just leave us totally dumbfounded. Like, I mean, and that's not, that's not, and obviously we don't have right. an to grind. Right, right. And it's not racism. It's, it's just, it's, yeah, so, no, and, and, and it's our word. So well, that happens here people. too. That happens no, 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 but, but it, it, uh, it's definitely, it's definitely, I mean, some of the rhetoric that you hear, it, you know, the people, the race stuff, you still hear stupid people say today, expats who live here, they, you know, they bring, you know, the thing is, you know, because they are carried on their backs, the Japanese don't have good balance. You know, mm -hmm. what I mean is the reason that stuff takes root though is is because there is a gov, there is an, a misunderstanding. I don't think it's unfair. I I, I think it's yeah, not, yeah, there's, there's cultural you shouldn't blame on the other people that you don't understand why they do it. And you shouldn't even necessarily think that they understand they do what they in the same way as Americans don't understand why other Americans do what they do, or you know, yes, so, yeah, yeah. So it's and again it's a form of othering. It's like it's it's like it's easier to because everyone's trying to make sense of the world to a certain extent, right? And life is confusing. And then mm -hmm. if if someone's a little bit other, it's kind of a little bit easier to or to think that you can dissect it because it's 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 like there's like a distance, right? So rather than looking at your own kind and trying to figure it out because you're too embedded, it's sometimes easier to to project it on to someone different and that mm -hmm. in itself again is not necessarily you know it's, it's not a, a racist or a problematic thing to do it's it's kind of human nature right but it's it's when you when you're unable to step back and realize that's what you're doing i think so when someone yeah, yeah. It's, it's, someone it's when you don't out, make allowances when yeah, the generalizations when, are exactly. so broad and when that someone you don't make out allowances to you, for people when someone points it out to you what you're doing you don't get your back up about it. Do, you know, don't be like, I, <laughs> you know, the same that's time, the worst thing. I have to say, I, you know, as, as you know, um, a dangerous, you know, uh, drunken lout uh, from Ireland, I, there are moments I can remember uh, a boss of mine in Japan who was, who was English and, and really nice, you know, a uh, great guy. Um, but at one point, my brother was flying in to to japan and he said to me like oh you know like what time does this plane get in and i was like i don't know and he was like ha, oh, that's so irish and i was like <laughs> what fuck you um you know you oxford bastard and it, it was immediately my back was up and i because I, here's the thing i thought no that's so me my own sister right. would have known when he was coming right. in right. like don't ascribe my failing my character flaws and failings to my race Right, it's, you know, right. To yeah. my culture, no, there's plenty the, of artists the who fact, have their shit together. I'm just not one of them. Yeah, the fact that he had a crate of guns and bombs with him, though, that was Irish. Well, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. We did yeah. have to. It was hard to get those through, actually, uh, Narita. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, but anyway, yeah, yeah. So I think you know, you just obviously we have to be careful about not not seeing people as people first and foremost, and then as products of their culture and upbringing and families and. But so another thing that was interesting to me was, and he does he does get into this a little bit, this idea of this of this hierarchy, right? Which you know we we all know. I mean, every all cultures have them, right? And the Japan's mm. were fairly strict, right? It, certainly during the feudal times, right? You know, if you were a samurai, you were allowed to cut down a peasant in the street and kind of no questions asked, right? So you have this kind of, and this you know this carries on to a certain degree. Um, well, hang on, hang on. Can I just stop you there? Just yeah. not to derail you, but yes. this is actually a good example of... So what you just said, right, is mm -hmm. I think probably true to a certain extent, but also it's kind of one of those statements where... I, yes, yes. If you were to <laughs> Maybe actually a look broad. up the historical records, yeah. I'm going yeah, to... Yeah. Oh, no, I've, I've, seen Nakedai, I've seen Nakadai Tatsuya do it enough times in movies, exactly. and I'm sure... But you know what I mean? It's, it's one of those things like... People will repeat, and then, and it might be true, but I'm wondering if you actually went to check it out. I'm wondering if you would actually probably find... Yeah, they were immediately of hauled off by the Edo police. Yeah. Like, and people said, dude, stop going around killing peasants. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's, that's not, not cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, entirely possible. So, Sorry, I just wanted to flag that up. Uh, yes, this idea that um, 
you know, they, they, he talks about the kind of the Burakumin, right? And that there were, that's an untouchable yeah. class, that, you know, that all of this stuff. And then that at this period of time, this idea of knowing your proper place and the, the then the idea of, well, the Yamato people are the top of this chain, right? And that the rest of right. Asia will kind of have the new, their place. Yes, the new place. And that, you know, yeah. And then, yeah, that, you know, Europeans will find their place in the new order, but it's not going to be at the top anymore. Right. That's for the Yamato people. Um, was, that was interesting stuff. And I, I kind of wish they had they had delved into that maybe even a little bit more. How, because then this is also this argument that comes back from this, this ridiculous toilet training stuff. But the idea that, you know, things got so rough in the rest of Asia was partly because of this pecking order. This idea that, like, you basically pass it from like from senpai down to kohai, right? Like, right. To, you well, know... thing, and that's the thing. That's another example of how. Um, I mean, that's that's. I mean, there's a lot of that. That's where you have to be a little bit careful sometimes with your revisionist history and say, oh, that's just stereotyped by the Japanese. There are certain things that are true, and the and the senpai kohai thing. That's yep. still very much. Uh, a oh thing. yeah, every I, office, every school, yeah. every yep. Now, yeah, it doesn't necessarily all, always take it, it doesn't always go to the extreme nth degree, right? Yes, but, it, yeah. but it is there. It is there. And it is something that it, you would be foolhardy to dismiss as, oh, that's just a stereotype. It doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. but it is very, very real. So, oh, yeah, because plenty of Japanese people complain about it. I've, I've had plenty of friends uh, you know, and, and students, for that matter, who have come right. in. After a long day at the office, it'd be like, my God, I hate well, my place. In, in the, I found my place in, in the order, and it's not a good place to be. I'd rather be somewhere no, no, else. No. And that's another fascinating example, I think. Again, not to excuse the more extreme examples, and obviously there was uh, inherent racism and othering there as well. But I think one thing that some people might slightly not take into, um, not take on board when you're talking about things like the Patan Death March, and the treatment of POWs and stuff mm -hmm. like that is, I mean, and they do mention this a little bit in the book, but there would have been such a hierarchy within the Japanese military that often, I mean, Japanese, some of the, so, well, many, you know, weren't exactly treated a hell of a lot. No, a, no, 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 not at all. I think it's that's, that's, it's yeah. this top down yeah. of, um, yeah, it, it's the inevitable end result of that yeah. sort of structure, in a way. Um, and again, not not to say that there wasn't, you know, POWs weren't treated badly or anything like that, but it's just, I mean, for instance, on the Bataan Death March, for example, just to take an example, I mean, um, you know, uh, POWs died or from mm -hmm. malnutrition and, and mystery. Yeah. But Japanese soldiers also <laughs> died from of course yeah yeah like, they weren't they it, it wasn't it, it it was kind of yeah yeah they weren't being carried in in litters or you know no, exactly. or anything like that yeah exactly. no. and it was more of a it was more of a like they overlaid like the, the, the their kind of system of doing things on top of uh you know yeah uh, on onto it onto a group of people who weren't used to that structure mm-hmm so I think that's yeah, including yeah, including I mean you know a lot of the a lot of the ill feeling. I mean it's interesting you know at the very beginning there was a moment I think where where the rest of Asia looked at like oh my god they're chasing out the Dutch and they're getting rid of the the French right, and you know right. maybe this is going to be okay yeah and then unfortunately very quickly uh, meet the old boss maybe maybe worse than the or like you know the new yeah. boss uh, yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. worse than the old boss but certainly not any better um, no. no. And, and yeah, and also, lots of slapping people around and public humiliation, and and then yeah, I, and it's interesting Comfort as well. Women, all just to go back to what you were saying, Alex, I, I think we should. It's, it's really important to emphasize it, and um, just just the bloodlust, and and that got to the point where yes, yeah, some of the rhetoric, I, and before, even from people like Churchill and stuff like that, like yeah. basically saying things like, yeah, you know what, I don't think we can rest. Until like Japan is ashes, basically. Yeah. Like 
They at one need, point, somebody, somebody says, says like, "You need to be a nomadic people." Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Nomadic people. Wow. Yeah, it, it, it needs to be a country with no cities, and we will bomb them basically yeah. back to the Stone Age. Here's another uh, example: Admiral William Leahy, who was apparently Roosevelt's chief of staff, referred to Japan as "our Carthage." Like, yes, Carthage must be. Yeah, we're going to salt the earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah like Lidditch or uh, like the those villages that the Nazis kind of, uh, um, yeah. yeah, just. Took off the face of the earth. Um, yeah. So and I and I think what's scary about what's really scary about that in retrospect, because you hear a lot of. I mean, I was always. I mean, there's arguments, and and this is probably another book and another topic and another to be. But I, I was always raised by my father, for example. My father, um, always considered the the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki a war crime, like okay. He never... That's interesting. If somebody, if somebody of of that generation, that's maybe a bit of an outlier because uh, quite a lot of people of my parents' age that I've talked to over the years have always seen it as a necessity. And I'm What's and the, I've been the one I've, I've been thought. very I've much an this. outlier, an outlier who's saying like, yeah, I don't know if bombing civilian cities that were full yeah, of yeah. children and women I've and I've heard the, the, the argument, right, that, oh, actually, a land war would have killed more people and stuff like that. And But that's always struck me as as um, uh, hindsight, like, yep. that's always struck me as, like, people, yeah, in hindsight, kind of f finding uh, a, a get-out clause. Oh, you know, actually, uh, yeah, I was, and again, it might be just because my dad, so I might have been, thought that way so I've, I've always been biased but i've always considered it pretty way beyond the pale and outrageous yeah, yeah. but but no in question. retrospect it's it, it's interesting to see how what's scary is it makes sense that that was the inevitable thing that happened when you have when you have you know you know people who should know better really referring to you know yeah to to to, to as like nests right like oh yeah yeah, yeah. The, 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 the vermin yes. yeah yeah which was you know but, again something that the Nazis had obviously famously that's the done thing, ironically then, that's exactly what the Nazis said about the Jews right the, the, yeah the but then you have and, and, American and, propaganda constructing yeah. Japanese as yeah as basically uh, cockroaches or rats that need to be yeah. exterminated um, yeah and and you know and then of course obviously what's fascinating about the book is it does get into and then the, obviously the fall I'd be very interested to read the follow up book uh, because. How quickly you you shift from this yes. ex, this total war rhetoric, this exterminationist rhetoric, to oh, there are little brothers, and they just kind of they got out of hand a little bit, and we're going to help them get back on the road yeah. to yeah. to democracy. And, and more than that, how uh, how how quickly the Japanese kind of accepted well as the title of his of the, which is embracing it. Yes, Honestly, I suppose he he argues that there was this built in it was a few things. He, he, there's actually we haven't talked about this was the extended Momotaro kind of uh, stuff in there around this idea of the the Oni, right, the, the outsider monster as having a dual nature of right, being, right. yes, violent and scary, but right. also potentially okay. bringing, you know, positive change as well, right? But right. also this idea of, of the proper place. And so there's this acknowledgement of like, oh, yeah, we maybe we did get out of hand there. And may, maybe our proper place isn't to be the rulers of, mankind maybe our proper place is somewhere else and we're gonna you know um we were like we were maybe we were the upstart younger brother nation like this at least this is how it's constructed in the book i have no idea what the actual thinking in japan was post-war other than like wow our country's flat uh you know because you know the mass incendiary firebombing of um yeah of tokyo as well you know um and dresden i mean i think it's it's easy to forget that that when they had those war crimes trials afterwards, yeah. what the Allies had to do very carefully was decide which things are war crimes and which things aren't. Right. And as much as possible, right. things we didn't do right. uh, will be war crimes. And things we did do, like, for example, nuclear bombing two cities flat, you know, a mass incendiary firebombing of, of civilian centers, those won't be war crimes. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of stuff about the Tokyo War Crimes Tribunal in um, in embracing. De Honestly, embracing defeat is is. Yeah, yeah. no, I'll, I'll be definitely I'm interested to, to follow up after. I mean, this after is we this is good, but embracing defeat really does. Uh, like okay. I, said, I think it benefits from just an 
a, a, an older kind of wiser John Dower, I think. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm not patronizing the man. I, I'd never be able to write this book. No, in, no, no. In my life. No. But I'm just saying it is, It is. if you're going to compare it, Embracing Defeat really is a, a, a monumental work. Whereas I think this book is, 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 let's put it this way. I would put Embracing Defeat on a list of books like fucking must reads. Must reads, yeah. This wouldn't necessarily be on that list, even mm -hmm. though it is a very worthwhile read. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's put it that way. Um, so you, I had a question. Have you seen, because I, I was curious to see this. Uh, I've actually got it open here in, in YouTube right now. The 1945 Momotaro's Divine Sea Warriors. The anime. Effectively, yes. Yeah, the, and it yeah. looks like it's a Shochiku movie. And I always forget that those studios predated, you know, the 1950s, right? Um, right. I assume. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And and so yeah. Anyway, I, I I kind of skipped through it a little bit and just just watched it. It's quite strange, quite a strange it, like Disney feeling. Yeah, thing yeah, yeah, yeah. In black it, and white. It's interesting to to, to see actually uh, the good folks over on the podcast on fire uh, network in the Japan on fire uh, series. Okay, that's did a podcast on uh, uh, on okay. on kind of anime, which is very interesting for historical background. Um. Yeah, so, yeah, like I said, I would very much like to read a translated yes. from Japanese yes. companion piece by a Japanese, the Japanese equivalent to John Dower, I guess. Because mm -hmm. I feel I would really like to dig a little bit deeper. Um, but this is still a good starting point. I mean, considering mm -hmm. it was written in 1986 as well. Um, right. And actually, one, one of the benefits of reading a book from 1986 is I think if you... If you'd have, if you'd have um, written this book now, it would have been because it seems like in the wider context, it's, it's a blip. Um, mm -hmm. They probably would you would gloss over the eighties Japan yes. world stuff, but actually, it's, yes. quite, it's quite interesting to consider that yes, that generation would have still been around and how mm. that rhetoric played into. Um, I, oh I, yeah, I yeah. That, um, I'm thinking of that um, Ron Howard movie, Gung Ho. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They take over the Detroit car plant. Yes, yeah. Uh, and yeah. I, I, th yeah, I think Getty Very much a film of its time, right? Um, but uh, but yeah, and I also think I, I think it, it, there was a lot of frustration in the U.S. and in England, right? Especially in the '70s when kind of everything's in malaise and. The struggling, and then the two ascendant economies in the world appear to be the German and Japanese economies. Uh, like, well, hang on, there was a lot of that kind of like who won the war kind of uh, stuff being talked about. How did these two nations that you know, how did they come back as phoenixes? You know, yeah. um, but uh, but then of course Japan tanked its own economy. That's what's so sad about that second you know thing was just you know all those books we've read about. Um, you know, the crazy amount of I money lending that. and loan sharking and Yakuza <laughs> stuff going on underneath that bubble. Mm. Um, and, well, uh, you know, that's interesting. That's kind of, I think when we were reading those books, we were still at the tail end of it being an ongoing thing, right? And mm -hmm. yes, and now it's it's it has been resigned to history. Even the, like when you were reading, when we were reading those books, the whole idea of, yeah, the modern economic Yakuza was kind of a, a, a cutting edge way of looking at it, but even that has kind of gone by the way. The, the whole landscape has changed. Yeah. It's a it's a whole different ball game. Um, I'm not quite sure. Well, someone will write a book about that. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and, but maybe I'm I'm thinking for for some follow up stuff. Maybe uh, one is I think uh, I was mentioned earlier before we talked on on air. Hmm. Um, on air, I like the idea. This is being broadcast to those That's six right. people who check these things out. <laughs> Um, but, uh, you know, back when I was in the green room, uh, having my scone, uh, before we came out, um, that's, yeah. yeah, that's on your rider, right? Is, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For Nick. Absolutely. With fresh raspberry jam, uh, freshly squozen, but, um, Squoze but no, it them. was, Is that a word? no, um, oh yeah. So <laughs> what the hell is that? I was like, I'd lost myself in that, uh, flowery train of thought. Um, so I was going to say I wanted to Someone read. Someone wants a scone with freshly squozen raspberry. That's all that's, that's all that's in my mind now. 
Well, I wanted to, to read that book, um, Onward Towards Our Glorious Deaths, which is a, a graphic novel um, written by, uh, yeah, written by one of Japan's most famous manga artists, but who also was a veteran um, of yeah, the love Second World War. Our, our mates uh, over at the Products Comics Bollocks. Um, yeah, they could read it for us and give us the gist of it via some sort of uh, televisual yes. video thingy. But the other thing was, have you ever seen, because I haven't, embarrassingly, The Human Condition, that series of whatever it is, three oh, yes. lengthy Tatsuya I, Nakadai... In the first one. I've seen the first Okay. One. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, there's a, there's a wealth of things there you could pick from, though, like um, Fire on the Plains and then uh, um, uh, The Human Bullet and, yeah, okay. the entire trilogy. And, uh, yes, anyway. Yeah, okay. Yeah, a conversation to be had, as you said, off air yes yeah yeah and good book i i really i thought this was this gave me plenty to chew on i my book is well uh digitally noted up lots of pages have little tabs on them um yeah. for for further further uh, research many dog years i mean there were more i undid some to make my notes for this but uh yeah no this will keep me this will this will just to be honest it'll go on the pile mm -hmm. of a thousand other books with dog eared <laughs> right that I somehow mm -hmm. think I will get to before I'm in my grave, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so on that cheery note, yes. Um, uh, I can't think of anything. Uh, with no, there's not much funny to say that there's not. There's oh. not a lot of, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think we'll, we'll just leave this with with a somber moment of silence. Oh no, now we're making funds of moment of moments of Oh silence. god, no. Oh!